All right, I think we're live. Hey, my name is Jonathan. And I'm Caleb. And we're two pastors here in LaRue County. Yep. And today's a Monday. Tomorrow, something's happening on Tuesday in Hodgenville. Yep, so we're having a wet-dry vote here in Hodgenville, and that's what we're going to be talking about today, but not just about the wet-dry vote, which has been the topic of our past two conversations, but we're actually going to talk about after the final ballot or after the results come in, how we should act. Yeah, and this is one of those topics that, like, growing up, no one really wanted to talk about and stuff, and so it's been real helpful to me to kind of think through these things, process these things. And really what we want you to think about is, you know, winner or loser. Someone's going to win tomorrow, someone's going to lose tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, what do we do in that? And, you know, I'm wearing a U.K. sweatshirt. My wife bought this. I'm not really a U.K. fan, right? Right. But it's good for my marriage, so I wear it, right? And, uh, and, you know, that's a little sports analogy. It's kind of a little bit of humor. But, But we know people can get ugly about sports stuff. And then how much more on an issue that's really touchy and really mm-hmm. personal and where people have really gotten hurt uh, over, families wounded over with abuse or misuse of alcohol, um, DUIs and things. This is a touchy issue. Well, we know it is and we take it serious. Mm-hmm. Um, but tomorrow and beyond tomorrow, we really want to think through biblically, what do we do? Yeah. And so part of that is, and here's really the first thing, we want to encourage all of us ahead of time, so ahead of the, even knowing the results, how to act. And so here's the first encouragement. Um, remember, it's not about you, and it's not about either one of us either. At the end of the day, this is all about Jesus. And so how we act after the results come in reflect what we actually believe about Jesus. And here's the more important thing. How we act and carry ourselves communicates uh, a message about Jesus to the non-believers in our community. Yeah, and really, you know, apart from prioritizing Christ, we're, we're called to prioritize one another more yeah. than ourselves. Yeah. And we need to value our relationships with one another more than the results. And there's a temptation with a, a loss or a win to, for relationships to become divided. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to encourage us, like, you know, don't be selfish. Don't be ambitious in this. Don't burn bridges. Don't be arrogant and unkind. Just so tunnel vision of a victory that you cut off relationships that don't need to be cut off. Yeah, a third one is don't blame shift, right? So I think one of the greatest temptations, and we've seen this play out in in other counties around us during uh, different types of elections or even on a a national scale, this temptation to blame shift. So let's say your preference doesn't win out on uh, on, on tomorrow, and and so the results come out. The the temptation is to blame shift or to say, um, like, I'm going to blame Christians because they didn't get out and vote that this, you know, thing has come to our county, or I'm going to blame uh, non-believers and all these different things, or I'm going to blame this, this, and this. At the end of the day, listen, guys, like, this is an important issue, but it's not the ultimate issue. So at the end of the day, don't blame shift. Yeah, and you can think, like, from the side of winners, like, so someone's going to win tomorrow, you know. Uh, Don't be arrogant. Don't be boastful. The Bible's real clear. There's one thing we're allowed to brag about, and that's to brag about God, because he is worthy of bragging. And no earthly victory is ultimately worth bragging about. So don't be boastful. Don't be arrogant. Treat others the way you would want to. You know, be gracious and compassionate and understanding, um, making the main thing the main thing. So be humble. If if your side, so to speak, wins tomorrow, uh, be humble, be gracious. Yeah, and so along those lines, like let's prioritize uh, souls um, and where they're going to spend eternity over alcohol. So so I think the temptation here, and this is not just with alcohol, but it's really any type of, of, of vote, is that we end up we end up getting louder about things like wet dry than we do about Jesus like that's something that I think we need to like be sober minded and think about because I, I've been guilty of that like I've done that myself and so I think that encouragement for you too would be to think have you gotten louder have you done things to market your preference uh, in this election than you've done for Jesus in the past mm. and that's not a Jesus juke like that's a serious consideration what are we loudest about our love for Jesus or our legislation yeah, like, do, does the community hear more from churches on an issue of moralism than they do on the issue of salvation? Yeah. So, and so we want to kind of talk to a couple of groups real quick. I, first of all, if you're watching this and you, you, you know you're not a believer, I mean, church isn't your thing, the Bible ain't your thing, Jesus isn't your thing, you may know a lot about him, but you would be honest, if you're honest, you say, I'm not a Christian, I don't believe the same way as you do, pastors. I want to say, first of all, thank you for taking the time to watch this sure, and listen to us on this. Um, and, you know, here's the thing. Alcohol, the Bible is very clear, is a gift to all of humanity. It's a common grace. It's very, there's goodness that comes from it. So when you hear Christians being so anti-alcohol, I know probably what you're feeling is you're feeling, hate, you're feeling hated. Like, they're trying to keep something good from me. And I want you to understand, like, that, that's a long history in America, unfortunately, with prohibition and temperance in the 1800s and early 1900s. And I think maybe the heart of it was good. Like, they wanted to protect everybody from the dangers of drunkenness. 
um, but in doing so, they prohibited and restrained something that God says is, is allowable. And so I, I want to ask forgiveness from you, from the people that go before me, and from people even now um, who've, who've not had a heart from you. Um, maybe they've been arrogant or self-righteous or condescending or just plain rude and ugly about it. So um, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're sorry for sure. And let me kind of go to the next topic here. Um, it, when it comes to freedom, uh, so if, if you find that in your conscience uh, that the Lord has given you the freedom uh, to enjoy this, to enjoy alcohol, let me say this. Let me encourage you. Um, like anyone that would say, anyone that would make the argument that the Bible doesn't allow drinking, or in fact doesn't uh, and de- doesn't advocate for it, or says that it's evil or anything like that, let me just speak plainly to you because I think we've come to that point. Those people have not done their homework, and that's not me trying to be arrogant. That's not us trying to be arrogant. That's saying when we let the scriptures speak for themselves. You cannot make an argument and be uh, legitimately informed about the Bible and its context historically to say that it's not okay to drink alcohol. Um, The reality is, without doing some really wild theological gymnastics, um, you you can't make that argument. So, So when Jesus drank wine... Um, it was actual wine, and there was never this prohibition. And he had the opportunity while he was alive to say, hey, let me make this really simple, Jonathan, don't drink. Yeah. But he didn't. In fact, he, he, he spoke of it positively. He warned against it, but he spoke positively of it. So listen, if you find that freedom, don't let anyone put unnecessary shame or guilt on you. Okay, Enjoy that freedom. Don't, don't boast in it. Enjoy that freedom. It is from the Lord. Enjoy it within all good and right things. Yeah, and you know, uh, you know, I feel like I've got the personal freedom to drink, but my personal preference and practice is I don't. And maybe you choose not to, also. And 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 there's good reasons for that. But just be careful how you communicate yeah. that. Don't be prideful or arrogant. Somebody might ask you why you choose not to, and I think be prepared to give a reason for that. But be careful with that that you don't become self righteous or prideful in your choice of abstinence from alcohol. And and let me just speak to one last group here. Um, Maybe drunkenness has been some part of your past, I mean, you know it as, or maybe if you were honest or someone close to you felt comfortable enough to be honest, they'd be concerned that you're so regular with alcohol or having bouts with being drunk that you would be labeled as a drunk. Um, our, our main concern for you is not the alcohol. Our concern is God's concern, and God's concern is in, in two specific lists of scriptures. He lists out identities of those who are headed towards hell and and he lists drunkards in that. Yeah. And so if your life is characterized by a love of alcohol that goes above a love of God, you need to be concerned. And, and the beauty is our God is greater than any addictive substance. Mm-hmm. And so he can take that away. He can change your heart. But you've got to go to him. And you've got to trust to him and yield to him. Mm-hmm. And so our concern for you ultimately is not being sober. It's being focused on Christ and loving Christ. Now, Jonathan, uh, you've got a resource here uh, that we put together. Would you mind sharing it real quick? Yeah, so I'm kind of dorky, and, you know, unfortunately I've heard Christians and pastors misquote, misunderstand, misapply Scripture. And so if you're, you're kind of dorky like me and you want to know what, what does the Bible really say about alcohol, we've made a little handout on this. Well, not little. It's six pages, okay? But we want to be pretty thorough. We want you to see we're not making this stuff up. We don't, we don't want you just to take our word for it. We want to help you do your homework about what the Bible really says. So you can go to trustworthyword.com, trustworthyword.com, and we'll put this in the comments too, yep. backslash alcohol, or you can search alcohol. Mm-hmm. It's under life issues too. Um, but there's a handout there that just answers a lot of the common questions we've encountered, mm-hmm. pointed to the different scriptures, maybe where places people misunderstood it, and, mm-hmm. and how to address it that way. Yeah, and our main goal in that is like Paul's uh, applauding of the Bereans. Listen, here's the deal. At the end of the day, if your pastor or, or leader or church leader is saying that, you know, the Bible absolutely prohibits that at any time, they're, they're, we want to turn the freedom over to you. God has given you the responsibility to go and to search these scriptures yourself. Um, and so that's what we're saying. We're, we're not going to try to convince you. We're saying let the scriptures themselves convince you of the truth on this subject um, and live in Christian freedom and wisdom. And I think any godly pastor, like we, we if we're wrong, like... James 3.1, we have sure. to give an answer to God. We want our church members to come show us from the Bible where yeah. we're wrong yeah. because ultimately we're accountable to God. And so last thing really is if you, don't, if you live near us, Hodgenville, LaRue County, and you don't have a church home, 
Uh, we've got a, a, a loving bunch of people here at South Fork. Uh, we meet a little early, 9.30 on Sundays, but it's, it's, it's a wonderful place to worship God and encounter Him. Yeah. So we'd invite you to join us. Yeah, may the Lord bless you and keep you guys. We love you. And in other way that this vote turns out, um, may the body of Christ in LaRue County prioritize the gospel and really fly one banner and one billboard, one sign, whatever you want to call it, and it be the name of Jesus. Yeah. And if you've got any questions sincerely, and you can ask them nicely, don't be snarky or mean, put them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. Or you can write them to us privately if you'd rather do it that way. And then if this has been helpful to you, share it and, and yeah. spread the word. So yeah. have a great day. Thank you.